Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome science teacher with the tiny T-Rex in the background, wearing a lab coat. And in this video, we're going to talk about our bodies. Funny story, not really funny, but and not really interesting either, but I'm going to tell you anyway, uh, about that T-Rex. I've had that T-Rex in my classroom for a decade, so that's 10 years. And uh, one day, a student's like, Bertosh, your T-Rex needs a lab coat, because I'm used to make my students wear lab coats, because I was, uh, that's just how we rolled in my science class. We wore lab coats. The kids did. And... Uh, so anyway, they went home and they actually made that lab coat for my T-Rex. And that is very special to me. In fact, everything on my shelves behind me was given to me by a student. And there's way more than you can't see up there. Uh, there's a whole other shelf that you can't see too that's covered with things. But anyway, I digress and got totally off track. So what were we talking about in this video? Oh yeah, we are talking about our bodies and why we have all the parts that we do because we have a certain predictable shape as humans right we have eyebrows and ears and eyes and snouts noses and teeth and mouths and fabulous beards and well you probably don't but uh you some people do and arms and elbows and knees and feet and all kinds of parts and why why do we have these generally speaking i mean some people don't actually might be missing arms or something uh some other part but for the most part we can all predictably uh, count on having the same parts why what do we do with our parts why do we have eyes now you know what eyes are for because if you close them it's immediate imme it immediately becomes apparent unless you're blind it immediately becomes apparent what your eyes do they allow you to see so if i ask you why do you have eyes then you can tell me well mr bertosh it turns out that i have eyes so that i can see things so that i can see your amazing handsomeness and that is the correct answer but if you thought about all the other parts like some of them your senses we tend to talk and think a lot about those you know you have a nose so you can smell and breathe uh and sneeze on people if you're rude um you have ears so you can hear but why are your ears shaped the way they are why not just ear holes right because technically do you really need ears to hear i mean if i cut your ears off i would be a mean person but you would still be able to hear. You just need the ear holes to hear. So why do I have these satellite dishes on the side of my head uh, that stick out that way? There's a reason for each part, and there's a reason that they are shaped the way they are. So your ears are shaped like satellite dishes because they gather the sound. They're collecting. They're like funnels. They're sound funnels. And the sound is coming in at your ear and it's like, bam, and it's hitting your head and it's being funneled and squashed into your ear holes. So, yes, if I cut your ears off, you'll still hear because you'll have ear holes, but you won't hear as well. You, it will diminish your ability to hear because you won't have the uh, sound funnel to collect the sound. Okay, why, what about eyebrows? Why do I, why, why? Do eyebrows have, really have a purpose? Uh, we're not entirely sure what the purpose is, but we suspect it protects our eyes. It helps keep the dust out of our eyes. Same with eyelashes. What about your snostrils, your nostrils? But it's more fun to say snostrils. What about your snostrils? Why do you have snostrils, which are really called nostrils? 
uh, or why do you have hair in your nostrils, nostril hair? I can remember when I was little and I looked up at all the adults and all I would ever notice is how much hair was in their nostrils. I'm so glad I'm grown up. I don't have to look at people's nose hair anymore because that was kind of gross. But anyway, uh, why do you have hair in your nose? Well, probably to keep the dust out and to keep germs and things out. Okay. Why is, why are, you, are your hands shaped the way they are? Why is your thumb offset? From your hand. We call that an opposable thumb. Think about it. What can you do because you have an opposable thumb? It allows you to pick things up. It would be a lot harder to hold things like cups or hammers or anything if you didn't have an opposable thumb. The fact that you have a thumb that sticks out in a different direction from the rest of your fingers allows you to wrap your hand around something and pick it up and maybe take a drink out of a cup. So the design of our hands helps us do things, helps us build and get dressed and hold things because that is a successful design. What about knees? I'm just picking random parts, right? You could take any part and you could say, what about this part of my body? Why do I have it? And we could do the same thing with the inside of our body, but we'll talk about the organs in our body in another video. But for now, I'm mostly talking about the outside parts. So what about knees? Why do you have knees? If you didn't have knees, I mean, stand up and try to walk around the room without your knees bending. Okay, it obviously, obviously, knees make it a lot easier for you to maneuver around the room. So here's what I want you to think about. You, your parts, the parts that we have as humans, they're not just random. Okay, it, they didn't just come out of a bag and like, bam, here's what a human's going to be. I'm going to give them these random parts. Okay, the parts that we have have a purpose. Every part is shaped the way it is in order to facilitate or help us to thrive in our lives and in the environment that we live in, in the uh, world, because we can do the things like eat and talk and whistle, I don't know, stick our tongues out at our annoying sisters, all the very important things like that, whistling and sticking our tongues out at our sisters. Those are the important things, right? Uh, because of the shapes of the parts, they have a purpose and that purpose allows us to be successful. And if the parts were different, we might still be able to do some of those things that we need to do, but we wouldn't be able to do it real super well. It would be awfully hard to eat your breakfast cereal in the morning if your elbows didn't bend. You'd be like, ah, I can't get the food into my mouth. Ah, my elbows don't bend. So the fact that elbows bend and allow us to bring the spoon up to our mouth, kind of important. So our parts are shaped the way they are in order to allow us to thrive. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three. Three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your, uh, your science student. So sign up. Subscribe to the channel, and I release lots of videos. Also, in addition to these ones, lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics. Those ones you don't get to see my handsome face, but they're still good videos. 
and they're much more targeted and those ones are scripted so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah 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 the end uh subscribe thank you goodbye